Hello everybody and welcome to the latest video in our series in programming in Java. Last video we talked about several variable types including integers, doubles, strings, and characters just to name a few. Today we're going to focus solely on strings. And before we begin you may notice that my editor looks slightly different from previous videos and that's because it turns out I was using a custom theme and I have then switched back to the default theme so that mine looks more like yours. Now before we begin, I want to um, review the definition of a string. So what is a string? Right? So a string, as we discussed in previous videos, is just any bit of text surrounded by quotation marks. So uh, this is a string. So string can be any sort of text right here. It could just be a few words. It could be one word alone. It could be character of sorts, as long as it's text surrounded by quotation marks. And we can print strings out using the uh, print function that we discussed earlier. Right? So system dot out dot print ln, and then open parentheses, open quotation marks, and then we just type our string in here. Uh, this is a string. And if we go here and push run, yeah, it prints this string out there. And we can also make a string variable by typing string, giving it a name. Um, they uh text equals and we can just take this is a string right here and we can paste that right there and then we can just print out text like that and bam now strings are special they're different from most other variable types because they have built-in methods or functions right so if um what we if we wanted to figure out the length of this string text right we can simply type dot length right here. And this right here, when we push run, instead of printing out the string, it'll print out the length of the string itself. So this dot length, um, uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, is what we call a built in method, right? It is a method of, it's a function that the text has, or just the string has. And so, what this is doing is that this is going, this is telling the computer, hey, I want the length of the text. And then it's just going to the computer's like, okay, the text is however long. And it just gives us that value back. And we're going to take the value and print it out. So it's important to note that this length function takes no input inside the parentheses. Remember, in uh, the uh, a few episodes ago, we talked about how functions or methods were like math functions, right? Where we have f of x or something. Um, and then we get some sort of value from that. But in this case, length has no variable inside of the um, parentheses. So it, it's as if this x right here doesn't exist and we get the same value every time. So f of uh, x or simply equals the same number, a constant, right? And so there are other methods we have that do take inputs, something like a substring, which as the name implies, Takes in, uh, gives us part of the string, a sub portion of the string. And you can see it's, it's giving us an error because it needs some sort of input in here. And so what substring does is that if we give it just one number, like uh, let's say four, here we push run, it grabs everything from the fourth character on to the end of the string. And it's worth noting that when you count the characters inside a string, you start with zero in programming. So this first thing is the zeroth character, the first character, second character, third character, and fourth character is space right here. So by typing text.substring4, we're giving it an input right here. It's going from four all the way to the end. And I guess we could change this to with, um, we could change this to five. We want to get rid of that space at the front there. We see in the console. We push run and it'll start at the fifth character in there again this first one is zero um another thing that substring can do is you can actually give it two inputs if you want you know which the first one being where you want to start and the second one being where you want to stop and let's say we just want to print the word is um so then we're going to type seven here and we just get is now, technically, the seventh character is the space right here, but the substring function goes from the first number, so this, this fifth character right here, up to the character before 
the seven, uh, the second number. So the seventh character is right here. It stops at the S right here. And it may seem a little weird that it includes the first number, the fifth point, but it does not include the seventh point. And there's a few reasons for that. And the most uh, obvious reason is that seven minus five gives you a two. There's a difference of two here. And so by doing having this little quirk here, we get an output that is two characters long. And so if we go from five to like, um, say nine or something, we know that our output is going to be four characters long and we don't even have to check the original string. And we get is, uh, so this is a method that takes inputs right here. We call these inputs parameters. They're values that we pass into the method in order to get some sort of result. So depending on what these values are, we get a different result every time. Another interesting method that we're going to take a look at is this thing called char at. So char at simply gives you the character at a particular point. Right? So if we want to chart the zero uh, place, the first one in uh, in our case, right? So like this T right here, we type char at zero, we press run, and we get T. Now if we choose some like large number, like uh, let's say uh, 19 or something, so 19 would be outside of the string, and we push run, we get an error saying that it, that the String index is out of range, right? So we have to be careful that whatever number we pass into here is a number that exists within the string. So we can say nine or something like that, and it just gives us oh, it's a space. <laughs> it gives us a space right here. <laughs> I was wondering why that thing was printing. Um, perhaps that's not the best example. Let's try a uh, ten. And if uh, it works, we should get an S right here. Now, strings also have some other functions that we can explore, and there's quite a bit of them. So if we type dot, you'll see that Eclipse automatically suggests a variety of different methods that we can use, right, that, that are, belong to the string object. And so we have stuff here like uh, to uppercase, right, which um, if, we, if we just click in here, we click enter, it puts it right here. And um, guess what to uppercase does? It makes everything uppercase. Right here, there's also some stuff like uh, dot contains right here. So it's just returning true or false depending on whether or not it contains some sort of um, sequence in there. So if it contains, say, is right here, let me push run, it says true, right? Because it contains the word is in the um, string. This is a string. Then there's also some. A wide variety of other methods. I encourage you to go through and take a look at these. If you look at something like contains, you click on it. On the side here, it shows that contains and what it takes as an input, in this case, a character sequence or just basically a string, right? And so um, if we go to something like, uh, let's go down to index of, right? We see we have some index of ones right here. And what index of it does is that it gives you the index within the string of the first occurrence of the specified substring. So if we go and click here, and basically it gives you the, the point in which you have some other string. So if we want to figure out the index of, let's say um, the word string, right? Where in this string right here of text does string come up? And we see it starts at the 10th position, right? So we know that's the S from before. If that's what index of does and there's a there's a whole ton of other methods i encourage you to take a look at but just to recap what we went over today we uh, talked about strings and how they have methods and their common methods such as substring and length and we talked a little bit about how some methods or functions require an input like this index of one right here and some don't require an input like the um, dot length method right which simply gives you the same answer every time no matter what you put inside the parentheses and we also talked about how to discover new methods by typing dot after um, your string variable name and you get this whole list of things to explore in the next video we're going to talk about control flow including loops and if, if else statements but until then take care and i'll see you later